guest today. Let's bring him in. Who's our guest today, Mikey? Craig Mother Effin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Mother up and Jones, there, there he is. Let's get into it first. I want to, I want to hear. How do you guys know each other? We were just talking a little bit before the show started. How, how do you guys get to know each other? Um, in 2016, I believe the year I did Nogi Worlds. The only year I, uh, I did Nogi Worlds once when in 2011 when I was like 14. I won it when I was like 14, and then I never competed in Nogi again. And the year that I did Nogi Worlds when I was a black belt in 2016, Craig was in Vegas. He was a purple belt, a very skinny, like, purple belt, but he was already incredible. And, like, um, everyone was like, oh, this guy from Australia is here. He's incredible. So, like, um, I had the chance to share with him, and, like, he's so, like, he was so technical at high level. And then uh, I remember my friend Freeman told me, oh, he won Nogi World. He's really good. And then, like, um, and then, like, I saw him, and then after that, I saw him, like, just win everything. And then he did, every year he won more and more and more and more. <laughs> My, Mikey did beat me up when we rolled back in 2016. I want that on the record. <laughs> yep. How did you feel for Pans going in? Were you confident or not confident from the camp? I just, um, I after that tournament, I learned that if I'm going to fight um, heavyweights, I'm going to train with some heavyweights. Um, <laughs> you know, I was retarded. But uh, for me, it's like, fuck it. I'm stuck in my house for eight months. I haven't got to leave my house, Craig, in eight months. If I get a chance to leave my house to fight, I'm fucking fighting. I don't care. Now I'm cursing. <laughs> Craig, Craig, what do you, Craig, what do you think about him going up and fighting these big guys? Like he fought Ali at Euros and stuff. It's sort of crazy, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, it's awesome, right? Like, uh, so exciting for the fans and stuff. Well, it's probably one of the most exciting things that happened to Euros and Pants. That's probably the coolest story. And Mikey got some of the coolest pitches to share that uh, on his Instagram. So, um. The new rule in IBGGF with them ex allowing heel hooks and everything. What do you think about that for the guys that don't train heel hooks at all? Like all the IBGGF people, like how hard of an adaptation will it be for them? I, th I think it'll be a pretty painful learning curve. Like I think some guys that probably only do IBGGF no gi events will probably, probably be pretty irritated that uh, they've had very short notice to prepare for this. I think that will eventually adapt. I remember John, John Danaher shared a post sort of explaining the same thing, saying that he thinks like there'll be a bit of a steep learning curve, but over time, the, the champions will remain will remain in the same positions where they are now. But I think it's interesting. It's definitely going to grow the sport. It's definitely going to help sell DVDs. Now we've got a whole new market for the leg bugs, luckily. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? I think it's like you said, like, um, like it's, like you guys were selling uh, Chinese DVDs, like how to speak Chinese, and then they just made it in America. Okay, guys, the new national language is Chinese, so now everyone needs to learn Chinese. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for sure, I think that it's um, super interesting. Um, it's gonna make jujitsu grow more, which is what our whole goal is, right? With like competing and everything. So it's a great move for my BJJF. Like I've always been interested in Yolux. I just never had the interest. I just never had the time to focus on it because it was never involved in my division, you know, in IBGF. So uh, for me, it's exciting. Um, I think that um, I think that the top guys, like you said, will adapt. Like, they'll have to adapt. Uh, I remember uh, something Gordon told me when I got the opportunity to, like, work with him. Like, he was telling me that um, that because of the barren ball type of game I play, my knee line is never, like, really in as much and, like, the Baron Bolo, like that style actually is good with the Hilla game, right? Yeah. So I think like, um, I mean, you saw like Kainan took my back when I sort of got overzealous attacking his legs. I think, yeah, it's going to translate very, very well for you. What happened, like people would get heel hook very easily. They developed the counter back takes. Like I think probably Philippe's one was the real groundbreaking moment. And now a lot of guys are actually scared to enter the legs in the traditional ways because they're worried about getting their back taken. I think the only solution is like uh, K-guards, probably much more difficult and entering the backside 50-50 to get a, a back take counter out of it than say the traditional cross-ashi. If we enter that in a sloppy way, just get your back taken straight away. 